Akane Sunomori is not the main character of Psychopaths. This is going to require a bit of explaining, so bear with me. She, at the very least, certainly isn't the main character of Season 1. What is Akane, then, to Psychopaths, and who is the main character? That's what I want to talk about today, so let's get into it. To start, we need to think about what a main character is. It's who the story is about. This story is not about Akane. I think the easiest way to explain this is to go to the very first scene. No, not that one. The very first scene. It's a flash forward to Kogami and Makashima's fight up in the tower. Akane is commentating on this, saying that the two knew they're not just two ships passing in the night. She's commentating, she's a narrator, she's a spectator to the story of Psychopaths' first season. A comparison I can draw here is The Great Gatsby. Nick is the narrator. He's in Gatsby an awful lot, and in the book, the entire thing is from his perspective. But I don't think you'd find anyone who would say that Nick is the main character of The Great Gatsby. Akane is the viewer's point of reference on the first viewing. We don't know much about the world, or anything in most cases, and it's established right from the first episode that Akane knows nearly as little as us. We are told throughout about the basic day-to-day -day stuff that occurs in the Sybil system, but other than that, we're on the same level of knowledge about Sybil and its true nature and the criminal world as Akane is. She serves as our point of reference on our first viewing. In that case then, who is Psychopaths' main character? There's a really easy way to decipher this. It's just script writing basics. Nearly every story in existence can be divided into a three-act structure. Act 1, the setup. Act 2, the middle, which contains the struggle for our hero. And Act 3, the conclusion. One of these rules states that an inciting incident happens in Act 1, usually fairly early in Act 1, and that's what sets our character on their journey. Now let's apply this logic to Psychopaths' characters. I think you can reasonably follow three characters as the main character of Psychopaths. Akane, of course, is the one we assume at first is the main character. Then there's Kogami, who is the next most obvious choice. He's in it almost as much as Akane is. And then finally, there's Makashima. Now, let's explain using the three-act structure. First of all, Akane. So, how would her three-act structure be divided up? Where is her inciting incident? What's her goal? At the start, she doesn't have a goal. Her goal is to find her goal. She says this to Kagari, that she felt like she might be able to find her purpose by working with the MWPSB. Is that the narrative arc of Psychopaths? Akane finding out her purpose? I don't think so, and I think many people would be hard-pressed to say that that is the narrative focus of Psychopaths. In that case, you would have to go all the way to episode 11 to find her next inciting incident, which is Makashima killing her friend Yuki, which of course sets her on course to capture Makashima. There's the struggle in between, she tries to get to Makashima, things go wrong, Kogami leaves, she's not able to do it, and ultimately she ends up failing. That's our conclusion, she ends up failing. In the second half of the first season of Psychopaths, there's a much stronger argument for Akane being a main character. She is one of the main characters, she is not THE main character. Let's move to Makashima. His inciting incident is much closer to the start of the show, although it would still be very late in Act 1. I would say his inciting incident is finding Kogami in Oso Academy. That's what his arc in Psychopaths entails. It's just toying with Kogami. Now, it's a bit difficult to define Makashima's three-act structure because you have to pinpoint what his goals are. I personally think he had no goals other than just amusing himself. So his conclusion, in my opinion, would just be when he dies, which leaves the middle a bit fuzzy. So it's hard to define him as THE main character again. And then there's Kogami, and Kogami has THE strongest case for being the main character in my opinion. Firstly, He's one of the two people that Akane is narrating about. Then there's the three-act structure thing. Kogami's inciting incident 
would happen in episode one, right at the end, which is exactly where it should happen in a good screenplay. He gets shot by Akane and this reawakens him, puts him back onto the hunt for Makashima. Then the middle. The middle is obvious. He struggles to, first of all, get people to believe in Makashima's existence, and then when they do, he struggles to get to and kill Makashima while still being restrained by Sybil. And ultimately, he fails at the top of the tower when Akane refuses to kill Makashima. And then he leaves the MWPSB. He uses one of the helmets and goes off to take Makashima down by himself. And this is the start of Act 3 of Psycho Pass, the conclusion, which is Kogumi killing Makashima. That's his goal. That is his only goal. Masaoka will say so himself, that Kogumi has eyes for nothing other than Makashima. Akane is a spectator, a narrator to Kogumi's story. But what's really interesting is on rewatches of Psycho Pass, you can watch it with Akane, or Kogumi, or Makashima as the main character. Knowing the narrative elements, knowing what's going to happen and what has happened in the past, allows you to view the series in a different way. Urobuchi Gen writes his characters to have distinct viewpoints, and when you know the world and you don't have to be explained the Sybil system, the universe of psychopaths, you can choose to view the story from different viewpoints. I think a really good example of this is in episode 3, when Akane says to Ginaza that she thinks she's going to get on well with the Enforcers, and Ginaza says, I hope you're one of the wise that learns from history, and not one of the fools that learns from experience, in reference to his own shortcomings with the Enforcers. Now the first time we watch this, we think of Ginza as the more experienced and more capable inspector, and it's very easy to take for granted that he must be right, that working with the Enforcers will eventually turn around and bite Akane in the ass. But we'll find out that he's wrong, at least in Akane's case, that Akane is able to handle people like Kogami and not get her psychopaths clouded. In Ginaza's case though, what he said was absolutely right. Working with the enforcers like that would get his psychopaths clouded. So there's two different perspectives to be seen there. And you can take this throughout the show. You can see a lot of the questions that are brought up and a lot of the things that happen. And you can view them from different viewpoints, from your own viewpoint. And that's the beauty of psychopaths. It's what makes it so great to me is, no matter how many times I rewatch that show, I get something different out of it. Anyway, did you agree with me? Did you disagree? Let me know what you thought, let me know who you think the main character of Psychopaths is, and thanks for watching.